90s, there was nothing, nothing that equaled ECW wrestling. It, it was uh, the wildest thing going on at that particular moment in time. It's amazing that a toilet like the ECW Arena is literally considered the second most famous wrestling building in the country next to Madison Square Garden. It was a bingo hall. That arena, the people made the show. The people were the show, not the wrestlers. I was initially attracted to the hyper-violence because it felt so different and it did feel that it was beyond some sort of edge. If the edge in, in normal wrestling was here, I mean, they were way over here. It was real. They were fighting. They were hurting each other. They are putting away that it's predetermined aspect of it and saying, man, but did you see when he hit him with that chair? That can't be fake. So what they're doing is basically they want to see something to convince themselves that they've paid their 25, 30, 40 bucks not to see grown men play fight. They, they want to see something that they can grasp onto and say, but that's real, that's real blood. There's nothing fake about that. Those guys are really bleeding. Come on, guys don't cut their heads open and rip themselves up and do, and it turned out to be, that's the way it is, you know? You can't be a successful national promotion and do the things that ECW wanted to get away with. And they struggle with that every, all the time. They always struggled with, do we compromise who we are and what we want to be in order to earn more money and stay in business? And it was a hard choice and they made some bad choices along the way. I always thought that from, I don't know, 1995 on, there was always a fight to stay in business. You know, as they were always on that, on that brink. Did you, you know if ECW filed chapter seven or chapter 11? You know why, you do, do you know if they did? Yeah, had the You had the paper, so they did, what they fired? 11. Restructuring. Debt, debt of, what, yeah. Restructure and the restructure of the company. Yeah. Yeah. You know, guys would call me up, like I know action would be like, bro, what are you gonna do when it goes under? Dude, it's not, it's really not. I was the I was in denial to the day it happened. I think the biggest reason I'm being part of this as far as having an ECW extreme reunion type of a show is I believed in the product so much and I thought the company the product ended well before it should have I don't expect anybody to go out and top what they did 20 years ago because it's almost impossible 20 years older. But I do expect to see that same passion. I do expect to see the same devotion. And I do expect to see the same commitment to Extreme Reunion that they showed Paul Heyman and ECW back in those days. My, my philosophy, my input, my attitude, what I do in this company is very simple. We take a bunch of hungry guys, all have the best interest of the product at heart. I listen to them, listen to the people. And then you try to you try to get the two together and you see where that goes. Subscribe now on ECW Network.